In this video, we're going to review interest-bearing notes and notes receivable, how to calculate interest adjusted at the end of the year, and then when payment is received or made, it would work um, either way as far as the calculations go. It, you would just be talking about either accounts receivable or accounts payable. For this video, we're going to be focusing on the receivable side. So then we're going to look at uh, when the note does mature, how we need to record those entries and that payment received. So first notice I've got some calculations here at the top. Remember your calculation for interest is the principal amount, that's the initial amount that's being borrowed, times the interest rate. The interest rate is typically recorded or given to us um, or stated as an annual rate. So we also have to consider the component of time. Often we can think of it in days, we can think of it in months, or we can think of it in years. So if the, the amount, the interest amount, is quoted to us as an annual rate and the money is held exactly for a year, then time would just be one, one whole one. That's not always the way it works out, though. For days, there may be a 30-minute, a 30-day, 60-day, 90-day note, which is what we're going to have in this problem. So we often use the banker's year, which is 360 days. That was used, oh, I don't know, a long time ago because it was easier calculations, they say. Nowadays, usually bankers have uh, very sophisticated calculators, and, and they may actually use the 365 actual days or 366 on leap year. But we're going to focus on the 360 per hour. Accounting uh, textbooks typically work this way, so we will too. Um, also, if you were focusing on months and it was a three-month note, if that's the way it was worded, then you might say three and then divide by 12, which is the total number of months in a year. Now, as you see shortcuts that you can take, for instance, here we're going to see this 360 I'm sorry, 30 divided by the 360. If you see that that represents about 0 0.08333, just go ahead and take those shortcuts if you want. But I will usually do it the long way here because this will work. 15,000 times 0.12 times 30 and then the whole thing divided by 360 will give you your answer as well. And I encourage you to practice with your calculator so that it, when it does come time to for testing or for uh, completing homework, you're comfortable running these calculations. Interest, the interest formula will show up throughout your accounting courses um, many, many times. So make sure you know how to prepare that and that you're comfortable. Now let's look at this problem. So December 1st, 2028, Hitech accepted a 90-day 12% note from Baker Corporation for the payment of an accounts receivable balance totaling 15000 So let's stop on that just a moment. So they apparently had a, an accounts receivable from this customer. The customer couldn't pay. And so they said, well, let us just set you up. We'll make it a 90-day note and uh, we'll be charging you some interest. Usually a note is a f more formal contract and it usually will involve adding on some interest and so that'll extend the time period instead of owing me this amount and that's due now or paying me this amount that's due now you still owe me I'll give you 90 days on it and so we're going to see how that you would do that then high tech they tell us high tech uses a 360 day year to compute interest on the note and the fiscal year does end December 31st so notice that the note is um, switched over from account receivable to a note receivable properly on December 1st. So we've got 30 days that we need to recognize some interest in. Baker did repay the note and interest on March 1st, 2029, which was the actual due date. So let's see what you would do. So I've got some T accounts, which are wonderful tools for us to use. Don't ever hesitate to use those. Remember, debit is on the left, credit is on the right. In fact, let me pause and add those words. So I've added debit, credit, debit, credit all the way across just to remind you debits on the left, credits on the right. Now these are all of these, the accounts receivable, the note receivable, interest receivable, all of these are asset accounts. So they all increase on the debit side and they decrease on the credit side. Okay, so now that we've worked that out, let's get going. So on December 1st, when this note receivable is established, we will debit 
note receivable for uh, 15000 and we're going to give credit into that customer's account for this 15000 So let's go up here and make this entry now. So on December 1st, let's debit the 15000 I'm po just posting into the account as if this is our ledger. A T account is a tool for us to use for our analysis, and it is also a um, the way that we want the ledger to look. So we increased. Remember here we debited notes receivable. This increases the amount of the note receivable. So we've done that here with the debit, and then the other side is to credit that accounts receivable. And so we've done that with this account. I just had accounts list, accounts receivable listed first. Okay, let's look at the entry we need to make on December 31st. So 30 days have passed. The the note receivable was established on December 1st. Now we're at the end of December, so December 31st. So let's let Excel calculate. If you look with me over on the right hand side, I'm going to put in equals, and then 15,000 times 0.12 and then again times 30 divided by 360. Excel can handle this beautifully and it equals $150. So that's the amount. Notice the formula bar up at the top or if I click on it here it will show it to you. This is the formula you will use. Principal times interest rate and times time and Excel does a great job of calculating this for you. So I actually could uh, use Excel again here to say equals, and if I just click in that cell, it'll just bring that amount for me. So the amount of interest receivable that has actually been earned as of right now and that I can recognize as interest revenue, $150. So I'm going to actually put that in to the interest receivable cell also. Let's go to March 1st and consider the payment. So the customer comes in to pay, and we need to, if we're the person that's accepting payment, we need to make sure to charge them the full amount that they owe. So notice how I've selected up in the um, little t kind of closer to the top the amount that needs to be paid, the principal amount plus the interest. So the interest calculation formula is right here in the middle. They owe for the full 90 days. So the amount of cash that should be received is equal to the 15,000 plus 450. This is the full amount that is owed for 90 days. Formula works the same way. Equals 15,000 times your point 12 and then times now 90 divided by 360. And hopefully I got that right, and I do. So this is the full amount of interest. So when the customer comes in to pay, they should actually bring a check or or whatever form of payment in for a total of $15,450. Now when they do this, we want to give them credit into that note receivable for $15,000. Notice up at your receivable account. I had that already linked so that it populated up right away, but it was an asset. It carried an asset balance as owing 15000 Now when the customer pays, we need to give them credit to show that this account has been paid, much the same way as the account receivable shows. Then also, notice we had some of that interest receivable that was already recognized for the prior period of time in December. So 150 of that, this amount is going to also need to be um, upgraded because the, note the interest receivable now is not going to be an interest receivable anymore. That balance is going to be zero. So if, if you think back and forth on these, this will help you with your journal entry. Okay, so now notice we've got 15450 on the debit side, but I only have, adding these two together, I only have 15150 on the other side. What's the difference? The difference is right up here. That's the amount of interest that has been earned for the month, the whole month of January, the whole month of February. None was earned for the month of March because they paid it the first of March. So when you make this calculation using the same formula as before, and so let's just do that. It's good practice for us. So 15,000 times the 12% times, and now we had 60 days the whole month of January, the whole month of February. So 60 divided by that 360 is 300. And also 300 is what it takes to finish out this transaction so that we have 15,450 on the left, 15,450 total 
over on the right or the credit side. Okay guys, so this concludes your interest calculations and then seeing how to prepare those journal entries. And I have to tell you the problem that most students have is with this part right here in the middle. They forget that you do have to recognize some interest for that period of time as an adjusting entry and then remember when they act when the customer comes in to actually settle the debt that they do have to pay the full amount of interest and that we also need to remove that interest receivable from the books.